Hello, this is Hank Green for DFTB Records, and I'm going to show you today how to play one of my songs. <coughs> this is one of my more complicated songs, which is why I wanted to do this. Uh, none of the chords are difficult, but it, the strumming is weird, um, and the chord changes are fast. So, this song is called Book Eight. It's about the the eighth Harry Potter book that doesn't exist. When I start the song out, when I'm playing it live, I always say, "This is a song about a book," because then everybody thinks it's going to be asking a Deathly House. And then I say, "It's about a book that doesn't exist," and then everybody's like, "Oh, it's Book Eight," and they giggle. It's always good to have a giggle. Okay, the first step, if you want to sing it in the same key as me, capo, second fret. Once in Boston, I forgot to capo the second fret, and I was like, why can't I sing this song? It sounds wrong! So the verse is pretty straightforward. You get a G, D, C, G. The G is just one down stroke, easy enough. The D is an up down. And then the C is two ups. And then the G is an up down, like the D was. So. The first time around when you do the G, it's the same like you're doing this, both G's, but you hit the low strings at the top. So the first, first time around you go, and then the second time around you go, and you hit the high strings. So. When I'm doing the intro I just do those two and then I go straight into the song. So. So the third line in the chorus, you go back to the D. G, D, C, D, instead of G, D, C, G. I know I'm not the only one who wants to know more about Harry's sons. I really do think there's an unwritten story, and I think it's time to put fingers to keys. A lot of people are gonna wanna know more about Grindelwald and Dumbledore. I really do think that they're both bad and lefty, and I think there's probably a good story there. And then if you want to do a real Hank Green style, you gotta do these palm mutes, these big... I don't know why all my songs have these like big poppy palm mutes. Sound horrible in your recording, but... So whenever you want it to play like me, every time you change chords, you just gotta slam it. I just like it. I like the percussion aspect of it. But there's a lot of mute in the chorus, there's a lot of tacit on the guitar. I want J.K. Rowling to say. So we got these palm mutes that are not poppy. Uh, gotta get that down. I want J.K. Rowling to say that the epilogue was crap because we all know it was crap. And I want J.K. Rowling to say that Voldemort had a son and the story's just begun. And I want J.K. Rowling to say she's writing book. back into this. And then there's a bridge. He's writing book eight. And then I just go on G for a little while and then I go, she could call it Harry Potter and the pillar of Storge. Down, pop up, up, down, down, pop up, up, down, down, pop up, up, down, down, pop up, up, down. It becomes quite natural after a while. She could call it Harry Potter and the Pillar of Storge, or Harry Potter and the Starfighters of Ajumar, or ha Harry Potter. And that's whatever you want, you just put whatever you want into the sentence. You look around your bedroom and you look at what you see. I actually saw the Harry Potter books when I just looked up there. <laughs> or Harry Potter and Scott Westerfeld. Or Harry Potter and Fragile Things. Or Harry Potter and Wintersmith. Or Harry Potter and Natural Capitalism. Then when you want to get a little out of it, you want it to build, then you stop with the palm muting. Oh, Harry Potter, you know that I want a bouquet. I want a bouquet. Oh, Harry Potter. You know, you don't have to strum it like me. You could finger pick it. I don't care what you do, really. I know I'm not the only one who wants to know more about Harry's sons. I really do think there's an unwritten story, and 
I think it's time to put fingers to key for book eight. And that is it. So if it's not easy for you, then practice, and eventually it will, I promise. For book eight.